Hey guys, this is Ray, owner of DRP Motorsports, and welcome back to our shop. Today I wanted to do a video showing the uh, dyno comparison between uh, a positive displacement supercharged setup on our shop car versus the uh, twin turbo setup that we recently took off of it. Had some guys asking me uh, uh, to do a uh, dyno comparison between the two and to show exactly the differences in the power curves and what that translates to and we'll also talk about some typical supercharger setups in the process so let's dive into it all right so we're talking about forced induction here and we're talking about it on a coyote mustang or f-150 so you have two main options and you know forced induction is the way to go to make big power uh, you have a supercharged setup or you have a turbo setup now there's different variations of both but the fundamental difference is is the supercharged setup is belt driven off the engine requires actual power torque from the engine to rotate the supercharger to make the extra uh, power by adding more air into the engine basically you, both superchargers and turbochargers are devices that compress air and force it into the engine to allow it to burn more fuel because it's shoving more oxygen in the engine than it normally could take in naturally uh, turbos instead of being belt driven off the engine they are exhaust driven uh, turbos are as far as as far as uh, power um, for input are more efficient because you're not using uh, crankshaft power to turn over a turbocharger compressor in order to compress air but there's limitations there you, you exhaust back pressure is a factor there uh, turbo size comp compressor exhaust housings uh, exhaust wheels, compressor wheel sizes. There's a lot of stuff there I won't get into. Uh, superchargers, um, you know, basically the faster that you turn it, the more boost it'll make, the more power it makes. But superchargers also themselves have an efficiency range. Uh, you can get uh, ones that have, you know, bigger compressor units and, you know, you typically the bigger compressor units takes more rotational power from the engine to turn over. So we're not going to get too in-depth in it, but just know the difference, the basic difference between a turbo and a supercharger. Uh, the supercharger is belt driven off the engine, requires engine power to rotate it. The turbo is exhaust driven, does not require engine power to operate it. Now. There are some key fundamental differences between a supercharged and a turbocharged setup. Turbos, basically you have to hear the term spool. Basically there is an efficiency range in the engine's RPM band in which it will produce the exhaust uh, drive pressure needed to drive the turbocharger hard enough for it to make boost and make the engine have more power. Uh, typically that occurs, you know, in the mid to upper RPM ranges, depending on turbo size and so on and so forth. Is where superchargers, if you're talking about a positive displacement blower, have boost just as soon as you crack the throttle. Um, centrifugal superchargers, uh, not quite so much. Um, they do have boost down low, but not as, as much so as a positive displacement blower. And what do I mean by a positive displacement blower? Uh, examples of those are like uh, um, Whipples, which we love the Whipple supercharger. That's a positive displacement blower. Uh, there's others, there's Roush's, there's VMP's. All of these supercharger units that have basically like a, a screw or a rotor design is made up inside of it. Um, basically, they, they were called positive displacement blowers because for every revolution that those rotors turn, it basically grabs and shoves a certain displacement of air into the engine. And by doing that, just as soon as you open the throttle, you get a big shot of air that goes into the engine. And that's why those setups are most often found on OEM setups like with the uh, GT500s. Uh, just as soon as you crack the throttle, they get boost and that's what you want on a street car. You want instant response. You don't want to have any lag. Centrifugal chargers have a little bit more, they don't have quite the, quite the lag that maybe some turbo setups have, but you know they still have a little bit of lag it's because they're basically like a belt driven turbocharger. They have a uh, basically like a fan blade uh, wheel that s takes air in, compresses it, and forces it into the engine. So it's not like every revolution those little blades turn over that it brings in a lot of air. It takes a lot of RPMs that create a pressure gradient with those compressor setups to get the air into the engine. 
So it's kind of the opposite of a positive displacement lower and more like a turbo, but yet it's belt driven. Turbos, exhaust driven, you're not requiring any engine power to rotate the compressor housings. You're just using exhaust drive pressure through an exhaust wheel to in turn turn a compressor wheel, which draws air in and forces it into the engine, but it does take a certain amount of drive pressure to get that turbo spinning in order for it to bring in air and force it into the engine. And quite oftentimes that doesn't incur, occur uh, efficiently until the engine gets into the mid to upper RPM ranges. So I wanted to show you uh, some uh, dynagraph here. I'll bring the camera in closer and on the dynagraph it is the dynagraph of our shop car that had uh, the twin turbo set up on it from Helen at one point and now the 3.8 liter Whipple set up on it now and I want to show you some key differences in the power band. Um, I'll get in more details in just a second so let me get the camera on it. Okay guys, I've got uh, the Dynagraph pulled up here I wanted to show you. And what I've got here is um, two different pools, two different occasions, two different setups. Both are the same car. This is our 2019 shop car. And just as a reminder, this car has a Ford Racing Illuminator crate engine in it. And it is the low compression version, which has 9.5 to 1 compression. So keep that in mind. But... I wanted to show you this comparison this way because this is the same car, the same engine with two different setups on it. So, and at similar boost levels, similar power levels, so you could see the comparison between a turbo setup, in this particular case, a twin turbo setup versus the uh, positive displacement Whipple setup. Uh, specifically, the twin turbo setup, if you're, if you're not familiar with uh, what we've done to the car, it is a it had a Hellion uh, twin turbo sleeper setup on it. Had the Hellion 6262 ball bearing turbos. Now it has the 3.8 liter Whipple uh, supercharger setup. And uh, anyway, the red lines here are the twin turbo pool. Is the twin turbo pool power and torque? The blue lines are the the 3.8 Whipple uh, power and torque. And you can see quite a bit of difference in the power curves, okay? Um, you know, ultimately, twin turbos can make more power than a supercharger due to, uh, you know, not actually having to use crankshaft power to, you know, make power. But for us, um, we went away from the twin turbo setup because we like to drag race this car into eighth mile. This car has a 10R80 transmission. And I wanted to keep a converter in it that was still somewhat streetable. I did not want to put a high-style converter in the car. And uh, so anyway, we ultimately we, uh, went with the 3.8 setup, and I'll show you why. Okay, looking at both power and torque for the twin turbo setup, the two red lines. As you can see, uh, RPM rise, we started both pulls a little, about 31, 3200 RPMs. And we carried it all the way to about 7,500 to 8,000 RPMs. So you can see when we started the dyno pool, the throttle was wide open. But you see both power and torque, both these red lines, kind of low in comparison to the supercharged setup. Now once it gets up in the, you know, the efficiency range of the turbo and it spools, as we say, you know, the power comes on strong. But you've got all this area from about you know, 3,000 RPMs in which we opened up the throttle all the way till about 5,000 RPMs that the car is really not doing anything. And for us, when we run the eighth mile, pretty much the race is win or, won or lost in the first 60 foot. And our car, with the converter that we have in it, which is a higher style than stock, the car just simply wouldn't leave hard. I mean, the car would go about 100 foot before the turbos would spool up and it come alive and then it would take off. Um, but we knew we were losing a lot in the 60 foot and I knew that a positive displacement blower like the Whipple that we've got on it now would make up the difference. And you can see the difference is huge down low. Just as soon as you crack the throttle with his 3.8 liter Whipple, I mean, my goodness, look at the comparison, um, right there between the, uh, the power curves. I mean, it's a massive difference. Um, look at the torque. 
um, 674 pound feet of pound feet of torque just as soon as you crack the throttle versus um, 361. I mean, that's a huge difference. A huge difference in torque. And the numbers don't really match up until, you know, the turbos really don't catch up until about 5,000 RPMs. Now, above 5,000 RPMs, you can see the turbos actually uh, come on pretty strong and made a lot more power in the six to 6,500 RPM range. But you see it falls off up here, and that was because of uh, valve flow. We were pu pushing those turbos very hard in that car, and it was causing a lot of the exhaust back pressure. The valve springs in the Illuminator engine were not upgraded. They're stock, like the production valve springs would be in any Coyote engine. So the exhaust back pressure was um, uh, causing the valves to float, and we're losing power above 6,500 RPMs. You see where the power and torque both fell off quickly. Is where with the supercharged setup, I mean, we don't have an exhaust back pressure issue because we're not using exhaust to drive anything. It just goes out the car. So the car is able to make power right on up in the high RPM range. So in this case, you know, basically peak power with that supercharged setup come in at uh, 8,000 RPM. So going down the track as the RPMs climb, the car is still making more and more horsepower. And just as soon as you crack the throttle out of the gate, you got all this torque. So it's going to make a huge difference on how the car responds in the eighth mile in 60 foot. Um, turbos, like I said, they're dead down low. Now they do come on strong, no doubt about it. But we would have to have a much higher stall torque converter in this car in order to be able to leave at a high enough RPM where this thing would make boost out of the hole. Um, you know, really, it's your cup of tea what you want. There's nothing wrong with the turbo setup. Um, you know, if you want to drag race with a turbo setup, you got to keep in mind where your power band's at with the turbos, and you got to be able to leave at that RPM range to be able to, you know, get a good 60 foot, make a good track time. You know, on the street, you know, you could you can work around this, but even on the street, I like having that instant power, that instant torque. Just as soon as you crack that throttle, boom, you got all that torque. And that's just tire shred and torque on the street, and it's a lot of fun. That's why the OEMs use a positive displacement um, supercharger versus a turbo setup, uh, um, you know, when they set up a boosted car from the factory, like the 2020 GT500, for example. We had one of those, and the power curve is very similar. Um, going back, I remember I mentioned a centrifugal supercharger. Centrifugal superchargers would actually have a power curve very similar to this turbo setup. Now, it wouldn't fall off the top like these turbos did. It would keep making power like the uh, Whipple did, but it would have a low response in the lower RPM range. You wouldn't see this massive jump in power and torque with a centri centrifugal charger uh, when you open the throttle like you do this um, 3.8 liter Whipple. So those are the fundamental differences um, looking at power, the uh, twin turbo setup on this particular pool made 1027 at almost 6,600 RPMs, 849 torque at 5,700 RPMs. See how high the uh, tor where the torque peak came came in with the uh, three liter 3.8 liter Whipple. Uh, we made 1032 on this pool, 803 torque. But look, torque peak was almost a thousand RPMs lower versus the turbo setup. So that's a big difference. Getting that power in down low. Um, so for us, that's what we wanted. So uh, anyways, guys, I hope this video is, uh, you know, beneficial. Uh, share some knowledge that, you know, maybe it answers some questions out there for you. So, but as always, thank you for following along. God bless each and every one of you, and we will see you again soon.